everybody, it's David Chewy. I'm Vice Chair of the Board of Supervisors, East Ocean Township, and we're here today with Philip Watson, who is, uh, we're fortunate to have as a resident of East Ocean Township. He's a professional horticulturalist. He is a TV personality. He's an author of two books on gardening, and we're re really lucky to have Philip here in the township as one of our residents, and he's going to share today his amazing garden and talk a little bit about effective and sustainable gardening in East Goshen Township. Hi, Philip Watson here from East Goshen and it's a beautiful August day and I'm going to show you what you can have in your garden in August if you so desire. This by the way, it is as big as your face. This is perennial hibiscus and I love them. They are great in a wet area but they'll also do well in drought area. They'll wilt down but they won't die and they come back every single year. The blooms are about nine inches across. I love them. And this variety is called Perfect Storm. It's got the nice dark foliage, kind of like a storm cloud coming in. And this looks white probably on the camera, but it's actually pale pale pink with a ruby eye. But beautiful flowers and this is about five feet tall. This is how big they get. I plant these because I don't feel like weeding here. So that takes care of all of that. I have no weeds that are taller than these, which is very, very nice. But there are a lot of varieties. There's a deep red one towards the back right there. That's called Midnight Marvel. But you can't go wrong with the perennial hibiscus if you want some curb appeal or if you want something that's kind of going to take care of itself. And in the heat of August, a lot of things are looking tired. This just looks like a party. Have you ever seen these before? You've probably seen the big drumstick alliums. This is also an allium. And I absolutely love this. It's called Millennium. A few years back, it was perennial plant of the year. They've got great stems for using an arrangement. Also, you can dry these and color these. Full sun for these. But again, here we are in early August. These are just getting going. They're beautiful to edge the bed with. I've got daylilies behind them. And you can also use the foliage just like you would chives. So you can actually cook with it. But I wouldn't be without them. They're easy peasy. Again, no chance of weeds here. A great tidy edge to your border. Get them. thinking you're in Pennsylvania how do you have agapanthus and I've never seen an agapanthus like that this one's called yes twister and it is like Delft China because it's blue and white but what I do with agapanthus and with canna lilies these have been in for three years I put a foot of mulch on top of them around Halloween time then I take it off around the end of April then they come up that's the way I can have things that other people don't have, and that's a trick to having a pretty fabulous garden. But this is my tropical area, and I've got tropical hibiscus back here. These do have to get brought into the greenhouse. They come in a variety of colors, but they're in containers, so they're very, very easy to move. And then various pots of other annuals that I have here. But again, there are the pandas back there. They get a foot of mulch. You can't go wrong with that, and if you want a staycation, we have had the longest one ever this year, this is the way you do it. All right, here I am in front of my pseudo bog, and a lot of places in your garden may be too wet to grow anything. It might be where a drain pipe is coming out. In my case, I am in the watershed, and the water goes all the way across the driveway into this because it's August, it's somewhat dried out, but the birds come to it, the box comes to get a drink, and the tall skinny tree that you see here is a pond cypress. It loves the wet, so choosing the right plants for a wetland area, the variegated foliage you see back here, that is a variegated black gum, and black gum trees also like the wet. All cypresses do the deciduous ones as well but making something that would have been a problem into something that's a big problem. Well, my favorite, favorite tree. 
This is called a monkey puzzle tree, and it's native to Chile, and it will actually grow right here in the East Goshen. It's got to be on a mound, in full sun, out of a lot of wind, but it'll do really well. It just doesn't like wet feet. But I eat really prickly, so it looks like this all the time. 12 months out of the year, it looks like this. But having something unusual, having something different, is pretty cool. And uh, I had my, my favorite gardener who passed away a few years ago. His daughter and I planted this in honor of him. So if you're thinking about something special for a special someone, the monkey puzzle, oricaria, oricana is a good candidate. August is beautiful because it's my birthday month. No, actually, it's because you can have gorgeous things in August like these beautiful hydrangeas. Now, you know the mop heads, the blues and the pinks. Every time it gets hot, they just wilt. This was a hydrangea paniculata. The variety I'm showing here that is probably five and a half, six feet tall. This is strawberry sundae. There's another variety called vanilla strawberry that is about the same size. I love these. They're great to cut and bring inside. They're also great to dry. And if you have a larger pot, the taller one back here that looks similar, that's limelight. Limelight will get easily 12 feet tall. So if you have a small garden, this one, vanilla strawberry or strawberry sundae would work for you. Limelight would be the big one. It's also a great barrier between you and your neighbors for the season. They are deciduous. Um, and as I mentioned, they're drought tolerant. They work well in the area. You'll see them all over East Goshen. In fact, all over Pennsylvania, all the way up into upstate New York. They do need a frost as they don't work down on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, but we got it good here and I'm sticking around. This is like an amazing garden. Thank and, you. And it's, how much time do you spend and what kind of gardeners are there? How would you classify gardeners as, as you know, for me, just getting out and weeding is daunting. So uh, talk to me a little bit about you know, what kind of gardeners you experience. Well, uh, there are certainly, as you mentioned, all types. And uh, I gardening is my hobby aside from my vocation. Uh, so I'm happy doing it all the time. It never feels like work for me. Um, but a lot of people make the mistake of designing the perfect garden which is ends up being a nightmare because it's everything they ever wanted and they never think how am I going to take care of it. If you can afford to hire someone to take care of it, great. If you like to take care of it yourself, great. But make sure you know how to take care of the plants. At least read the tags when you buy the plants so you know what the size is going to be. Just for example, this is Rosa Sharon right here and it wants to be taller than the house but every winter I whack this back to four feet, then it grows up and blooms. But I know that I have to do that. So you have to educate yourself, or at least know someone who's educated, uh, so you can further yourself. And other people, they may not have this much room, they may have just a container. And you want that nice, so I've got tomatoes in this one, and I planted flowers around the base of it. So if you've got a balcony, and you think, oh, I can either have tomatoes or flowers, you can have both in the same pot. But I call those perfect companions.